Tell me about the Pedigree Feeding Project. It's so cool for me to be part of it because it's my passions are music and animals. Um, basically, they're looking for a new community. They've done Nashville and Chicago so far. Um, they're looking for a new community and they will give shelters um, in that community food for a year. And it's saved shelters up to $100,000 in the past. Um, and so they're able to use that money for other things. Um, you know, whether it's adoption drives or fixing up their shelter, they neuter clinics or whatever they need to use it for. Um, it frees up all those funds because Pedigree's feeding all the animals in the shelter and um, it's 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 so cool and what I love about it is that it's going to draw so much attention and awareness to shelters all across the country because people basically they log on to facebook.com slash pedigree and they'll kind of tell us their story why their community and their shelters and their community deserve it more than others you know and it's sort of like they're they're kind of like plea bargain like we need it because and I think even if your community doesn't win, there's, they'll be top five, and then after, out of the top five, Pedigree and America will vote on the number one shelter. But I think it's gonna draw so much awareness to shelters and to adoption, and just really get people involved in their local communities with adopting pets. You say your passions are music and pets. How close are you and Blake to your pets, and how many do you have now? We have a ton of pets. We have uh, five dogs right now, and um, we have six, but one of them is retired from the road. My grandmother kind of claimed her, so we have joint custody, um, <laughs> Delilah. But um, we, we, they're our family, but we don't have children, so our dogs are our children. We kind of treat them that way, and um, I have a farm, so I have horses and many horses and pigs and chickens, and um, it's just a great, like, you know, touring and having this rock and roll kind of lifestyle and, and being in L.A. on the voice, and when we go home, it's like a totally different world. It's, we're in the country, and we're just with animals, and we're miles from any major city, and it's just it's really, it really calms us down and keeps us grounded. You and Blake are so, so busy. Do you have a rule about how much time you can spend apart? Yeah, we try to go um, no more than two weeks because I just feel like after two weeks, it's like you've had plenty of time to miss each other, but then after that, you sort of start putting up a wall and it's like, okay, we got to re-get to know each other and then you're gone again. So we don't, we don't go longer than two weeks without seeing each other. People love how candid you and Blake are on Twitter. I miss you, I miss you too, see you in six hours. But have you ever regretted anything you've posted? Have you made Blake take anything down? Um, I don't. I mean, I've unfollowed him quite frequently from Twitter just because it's sometimes like annoying. <laughs> but um, but no, I mean, I feel like when you're really open about your relationship and your private life because we have nothing to hide, um, the less people dig. A lot of young women look up to you because you are a strong, secure, independent woman. But have you ever had self-esteem issue or body image struggles? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm insecure about a million things just like every other girl. But, you know, I found that... Um, I try not to just get wrapped up in it. I try to really, you know, I have so many girls come up to me at shows and just on the street and say, thank you so much for being normal. You make us feel like we can be normal and be, you know, up there and be confident too. And that's important to me. You know, I always say I'm, I'm a proud size eight. It's like, that's the way God made me. And I have a trainer and I work out and try, but I also love to eat and party and have a adult beverages and I don't want it to be my life. I want to live my life and be happy and I think everybody was born a size and you can just try to tone it and not jiggle and that's really my goal. That's why God made Spanx. <laughs> a lot of people may not know or may not remember that you first became visible on Nashville Star back in 2003 when you competed on that show. Would you ever consider judging a reality competition like that? You know, I watch how, um, you know, the, the voices and it, seeing how much work and heart he puts into it, how that much they all do, the, the coaches. And, you know, the only thing I don't like about it is that it takes away from their music sometimes. He doesn't able to really tour that much. And when he's making an album, he's like making the album at night after he's off work from the voice. And I'm just, I would be too... Um, sad to be I love being on a tour bus I love playing shows and I love writing songs and I would be you know sad that it would take me away from that actual passion of it but I love being a guest on there I mean that was a blast being a mentor so but I know I mean that's a very hard job people don't realize just sitting in that red chair is not even touches the surface of how much work goes into it